it's so it's a blessing to come and to see how many people experience the presence of God. Amen. And I hope you will keep that presence of God. And you know, uh, yesterday we led some classes to cry out to God, and then they experience the joy of the Lord. Now let's try a little bit here. It's like the whole soul. It's not just the mind. Your whole soul, the spirit, ascend to God, rush to God, to appreciate Him. So you cry out with the last breath all the way, and you might experience a joy. Let's try it together. Ah, hallelujah. You just cry out, ah, hallelujah, and think of God. And some of you, in the last breath, you might experience a joy coming to you. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, is that you love God with all your heart. Amen. But this is just one way to help you. Now for me, I don't need that way, but I'm trying to f help people to be able to experience God like me. <coughs> Very important, why I can experience God so easily, is that first, I spend a lot of time praying. Second, I really believe God is loving, God is real, God is blessing us, God is good. And I really like God from everything I experienced about God and when I saw people experience God, I'm very appreciative of God. So I like God very much. And for the whole day, I would be having the heart to like God and say, God, you are so good. And, and I hope that you're like this, that you will continue. It's very important. Now, this is just one part of our relationship with God. It's not just Christianity. It's not just about experience. It's also about how we have the relationship with God and follow God. And this morning I'll talk about how to maintain this relationship. It's not just praying. You need to have, you know, balance. You have prayer, experience God, but you also need to follow God's teaching. Now, one verse I want to say is Psalm 24:1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Now listen again, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. So everything belongs to the Lord. Now many Christians believe in God, but they think, okay, I go to church, I go to God. When I'm at home, when I'm at my work, I depend on myself. Or when I look for a wife or husband, I depend on myself. Many people live their life by themselves. They didn't realize everything is in God's hand. Amen. When God has a plan for you, when you follow God, the plan will be fulfilled. For instance, God's plan for you to marry whoever it is, uh, or where you work, and how your life will be used is all planned in heaven. But if you don't follow Him, the plan will not be fulfilled. But if you follow Him, you trust in Jesus, and you have a good relationship with Him, and you obey Him, and the plan will become more and more real in your life. And that person that God has planned for you to marry will not run away. And God will move in that person too, so that the person will come to you. But then if God planned, now some people might not like this, some plan for some people to be single, it's okay to be single. And then you can be joyful and with, you know, full of power of God. So it doesn't matter whether we are married happily, or single happily. Some people are married painfully. <laughs> and it doesn't mean they enjoy life. So it's best to follow God because 
everything is in God's hand. And then in Matthew 12, uh, 12, 7, it says that Pontius Pilate said to Jesus, Do you know that I have the right to set you free or crucify you? But Jesus said, You had known that this, that, I, uh, uh, excuse me, huh? Jesus said that you will have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. You have no power. That means God has all power for blessings to come to you, for your life to follow God's plan. If you follow God's plan, you have no fear. People in this world fear a lot of things because you don't know what's going to happen to you. And people worry about health, about marriage, about, about family and children, and worry about work and finance. A lot of worries. But everything is in God's hand. Nothing will happen to you without God's permission. So I hope that you decide, yes, I want to follow God. First, for salvation. Second, for your blessing on earth and also for your life to be used greatly by God, that your life can bless many people. And here today I will talk about a few things Christians uh, should do as Christians. Now first, we are saved by grace through faith. How are we saved? When we confess our sin, say it with me. When we confess our sin, when we confess our sins, repent of our sins. Repent of our sins. God will surely forgive us. God will surely forgive us. And then trust in Jesus as our Savior. Trust in Jesus as our Savior. Now, trust in Jesus doesn't mean I just believe there is a Jesus. It's holding on to Him. Jesus is my salvation. I need Jesus to save me. I want Jesus in my life. Says so that dependence. So faith is dependence. Say it together. Faith is dependence on God. Depending on God. So if you continue to confess your sin and trust in Jesus, hold on to Jesus, depend on Jesus, then Jesus will give you eternal life. That's, but that's one half of the truth. We are saved by grace through faith. Will you say it with me? We are saved by grace through faith. But this is half of the truth. Say it. This, this is the half of the truth. The other half is faith will always bear fruit. Faith will always bear fruit. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Because there are some people say, oh, I believe in Jesus. For sure I go to heaven. The Bible doesn't say that. There are some people, they think they believe in Jesus. Actually, it's just the mind believing, and they're not following Jesus. They will not be admitted into heaven. And today I will talk about a few things as Christians continue to follow. That Now this is not, I want to say clearly, we're not saved by works. We're not saved by, saved by doing good. We're saved by faith, trusting in Jesus as our Savior. But when you have faith, Faith will bear fruit. It's like a seed put in soil with the sun. It will always bear fruit if it has life. A Christian having life will always bear fruit. And here I will talk about six areas very quickly. First, the first sign of a Christian, first sign of a Christian, of the first fruit of a Christian, is continual repentance and turning away from sin. Say it together. Continue repentance and turning away from sin. Now, if a person says, I believe in Jesus, but he continues sin, there's something wrong with the faith. So there's a continual repentance, not just repentance. Some people say, I repent. Oh, I'm sorry. I yell at someone. But then the next day he yells at someone again. Oh, I repent of lust. Next day he has lust again. That is not repentance. You hate sin. Because sin is destructive. Satan used sin to destroy, to kill, and to, to, uh, uh, to uh, I'm sorry, but to steal, to steal, uh, to destroy, to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Sorry. <laughs> so, and then Jesus said to a man, 30 years a paralytic could not walk. And then he was healed, and Jesus said to him, Don't sin anymore, lest the worst thing will come to you. So when we sin, don't think that it has no consequence. For instance, if you yell at your home, will that be a consequence? <coughs> there will be a consequence. If you have lust, it will cause your mind to be dirty, and then it separates you from God. 
So any kind of sin is very destructive. And in uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, lists different kinds of sins. And some of these sins are very common. For instance, hatred, jealousies, anger, and envy, drunkenness. Many people have this kind of sin. And it says that people who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's very serious, isn't it? Will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it also says in Galatians 6, 8, those who souls to please the sinful nature will from that na nature reap destruction. When we follow a sinful nature, it will destroy your life. For instance, if I tell lies, if I get angry with people, if I commit sin, I would not have this way of blessing people. It will destroy my life. And many people you see lives, families destroyed because of sin. So. One thing we know that sins are very destructive. Say it with me. Sins are very destructive. Sin gives way to Satan. Sin gives way to Satan. And Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy. And Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy. So the first thing is repent. And the second thing is continue to trust in or trust and depend on God. Say it. Continue to trust and depend on God. So that's faith. Continue to hold on Jesus and believe that He blesses us. It's very important. If people don't have faith, it's just repentance, then it just works. Continue to say, yes, God is good. Hallelujah. Then you have strength and joy. You have confidence. And you know that God will forgive you. Now, we all have sinned. All have sinned. Many Christians say, I've sinned. I, I feel unworthy. I cannot pray to God. But I tell you, when you repent, God is very happy. Amen. It's okay to come to God and say, Lord, I have sinned. And then please forgive me and help me not to sin anymore. So continue to trust in Jesus. I always trust in Jesus. So I live in joy. Because from morning on I say, Jesus is loving me. Jesus is blessing me. Jesus is using me. And I'm going to bless many people because of God. So I always say positive things to me. Like the ch children, when I went to into each class, they all say very positive things. That's very good. And you should say that to your heart with sincerity. Really believe that. Okay? So two things. First, do you remember the first thing? The first thing is to repent and turn away from sin. And the second is trust and depend on God. And the third thing is have a close relationship with God. Say it. Have a close relationship with God. In John chapter 15, it talks about that the relationship. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. And then in verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Let me ask you, they are thrown in the fire and burned. Are they saved? No. So people who are not in Jesus, some people, they go to church and they sleep. They go to church and like the singing, but they don't let the Word of God stay in their heart. They think that they are believers, but actually it's just in the mind. It's just a habit. We want to live out the life. Now, but the first thing you should go to church, because if you don't go to church, you don't get all the teaching in the church, and you don't get to worship together, and also to serve God. In the church, you get the chance to serve God. So we need to have this close relationship with God by reading the Bible and praying. Reading the Bible every day. And nowadays, actually, you can get online with your cell phone or other tools and listen to the Bible. Now, other than reading the Bible, you can, when you are doing other things, cooking, brushing your teeth, taking a shower, you can play the Bible and listen to it for the whole day long when you are not working then you can listen and let the Word of God soak in you and pray to Him a lot. The more you pray, the more blessing you'll have. Now some people, they are far away from God. When they pray, they don't feel help because they have disbelief and they have worries and burdens and they have sins and so they, the distance from God is far. But the closer you are, the more miracles you see and you experience God every time you pray. Like me, every time I think of Jesus' joy and the love of God will flow out. 
And when I pray for people, I see so many miracles. I'm amazed. I'm surprised. I'm really thankful. God is so real. So to me, when we are close, it's very easy to have a close relationship with God. The farther away you are, the harder it is. But when you come to God, Lord say, and, and say to the Lord, please help me. Lord, I worship you. I like you. I thank you. And then you'll be closer and closer. And please keep the anointing. When we pray for you, you experience the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon you. And the anointing will help you. So pray longer after we pray for you. And then even when you're teaching, you can think of Jesus while you're teaching. It's like someone falls in love. When someone falls in love, does he have to remind himself to think about a girlfriend or boyfriend? So when you are in love with Jesus, you will always think about him. So this relationship is very important. Now, I, because of time, I don't have time to go over everything. But I'll go to another one is obey God. Say it with me. Obey God. In Matthew 7, 21, it says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Now listen. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord. Who are these people who say, Lord, Lord? These are people who have heard about Jesus. And they've learned to pray. Lord, Lord. They will say, Lord. Not everyone will enter the kingdom of God who says, Lord, Lord. But only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. It's only he who obey God. And then he said, many, not a few people, many, there could be millions, or more than millions, will say to Jesus on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. There are many people who say, Lord, Lord, I've done all this for you. How come they do all these things for, for Jesus and that they are not obeying Jesus? It's like this. Some people preach for a salary. Some people do things as a habit. They preach as a habit. They help in the church as a habit. In their life, they have anger they don't take care of. They have lust, frustration, lack of love, or leaving their wife or husband. They sin and they, they're not obeying God in their life. So the Bible says that not only do we have a close relationship with God, but we'll obey God in every area of our life. Now many people like this, when they go to church, they obey God to a certain extent. They like to worship, they like to sing, but when they go home, they don't like to obey because they say, I don't like my wife, I don't like my husband because he doesn't treat me well. Now if he doesn't treat you well, and then you don't treat him well, then do you have you sinned? Yes, even when people mistreat you and then you, you, you mistreat him, you also sin. So I pray that this morning the Word of God will speak to you. Amen. That not only do we trust in Jesus as our Savior, but we continue to have this relationship. Now briefly say again, first is to repent and turn away from sins. Repent and turn away from sin. And let second is trust and depend on God. Trust and depend on God. Now this trust is also for salvation. It's mainly for salvation. And then for, for blessings. And th number three is have a close relationship with God. Have a close relationship with God. Always praising God, loving God. Read the Bible, listen to the Bible and, and go to church. And number four, obey God, obey God. And, and then there are many people one day, can you imagine these people? They spend a lot of time in church. Maybe they spend a lot of time praying, but they pray like this, oh, I have backache, oh, shoulder ache, oh Jesus heal me. They just come for blessings. They don't come with repentance. In the prayer, make sure you have repentance. When you have repentance and trust in Jesus as Savior and to follow God, for sure you have a living relationship. There must be a repentance of sin. And God will speak to you and tell you, these are your sins. Repent of it. How many of you, when you sin, you feel guilty? You feel bad? You want to turn away from the sins? That's a sign that you're saved. Can you raise your hand? How many of you, when you sin, you feel guilty. 
that you feel bad about it. That is the voice of God speaking to you. So obey that voice. Now, let me ask you, do you dare to reject the word of the court of law? When the court order you to go, can you disobey? No. Now, we dare not disobey the court. How come many people disobey God without fear? We need to know, disobeying God is worse than disobeying the courts. So we know God is loving, but God is also holy. And we want to live in the love of God, at the same time we want to obey God. Amen. So this morning I invite you to repent of your sins. Repent of how we have neglected God, how we have followed our own ways, angry with people, uh, dislike people and do not carry our responsibilities. You say sometimes it's hard to overcome the sins. Let me tell you how. Simple way. Become aware of the sins first. This five steps to victory. First, say it. Aware. Aware. Now this will help you in overcoming sin and any kind of negative thinking or emotion. Aware. Aware. Destructive. Destructive. Believe that sins and negative feelings and emotions and thinking are destructive. Three, apply biblical principles. Apply biblical principles. The biblical principle is to forgive, to bless, to love, to help. Number four, pray. Pray. Number five, choose to obey. It's very simple. When sin came to me, in me I know this is destructive. Let me tell you, you see I bless so many people, but if I sin, I would destroy the perfect plan of God. If you hear one day, Pastor Yim is not serving anymore because he's rejected by the people, because he, fall, he falls into sin, will you feel sorry for that? You know, sin is very destructive. So we have to be, you know, uh, really turn away from sin. And this is a simple way. Whenever sin comes to your head, come to your mind, immediately take care of that. It's that simple. Say it together with me, the five steps to victory. Aware. Destructive. Apply biblical principles. Pray. Choose to obey. Many times we sin because we say, it's okay, I'll repent later. Because that's a lie of Satan. It's a lie of Satan because sin will destroy you. Now will you do this? Oh, I'll, I'll eat some poison. I'll drink some poison. And later I'll go to the doctor to help me. Do you do that? <laughs> Let me drink some poison now. Later the doctor can help me. You don't do that. Any kind of sin, even though when we repent, God will forgive. But it will have a consequence. If you yell at somebody, the relationship will forever be affected, right? If you get angry with somebody, it will be affected. So this morning, I ask you to repent, and you can lie, stand, lie, come out here, and we'll pray for you to experience God. But it's very important to say, Lord, I've mistreated people. I've hurt people. I've been angry. I have been irresponsible. I have disrespected God. Please forgive my sins. Help me to be repentant and hate sin. The key to overcoming sin is hate sin and to obey God and you have joy. Obeying God has joy. Obeying God has joy. Some people say, well, a man like you living, always following God, you have no fun. Let me tell you, I have a lot of fun. <laughs> God gives us fun. Okay? So please come forward. Now let me, let, let me lead a prayer first of repentance and then we'll pray for you all. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are loving and you are holy. You are loving. You are loving, God. You are wonderful, God. You, are, you care about us. You know each one of us by name. And you have spoken to us. You guide us to trust in you as our Savior, to guide us to follow you. Please help us to live in your love and enjoy your love. But also we want to repent of our sins and live in holiness. Holiness is beautiful. In heaven, the saints, they all live in holiness and it's very beautiful in heaven. But on earth, many families are broken. Many families have fights and quarrels and all kinds of problems. Oh Lord, please forgive our sins when we mistreat our family members. Please forgive our sins and help us to forgive others. Help us to turn away from sin and hate our sin that will follow you. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to have a close relationship with you. 
to trust in you in all times, to follow you in all times, to obey you in all times, and enjoy your presence. Hallelujah! <laughs> It's so wonderful to have you. It's so wonderful to have you. It's fun to have you. It's enjoyable to have you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now please continue to repent and think of the people you have hurt in the past. Think of how we have affected them and ask God to forgive you. And please, brothers and sisters, stand out here for those so that we can reach everyone. Okay? Now, if you are in a hurry to go, after we pray for you, you can go. But if you are not, then you can just relax and let the presence of God stay in you. At least stay for uh, a minute after we pray for you. Then you can feel the peace of God or the comfort of the Lord stay in you, and then you stay in that, okay?